Hey guys, good afternoon and welcome to a very impromptu five minute knowledge bomb. As you can see, we are on the beach of Santa Monica in Los Angeles. This is episode four of my five minute knowledge bomb. And guys, what we're gonna talk about today is carbs, fats, and which one of these, if any, make you fat. This can be down to competitors, general population, just anyone who wanted to lose weight or lose body fat. As I said, this is a very impromptu one. The reason why I got this topic was not because of the post today. It was actually down to asking two of my competitors on the way down here, what questions do you get by the general public? What questions do you get on Instagram? What questions do you get on Facebook? And they always like just assume that they're because of the level of conditioning that they make for stage or the re constant weekly results that they get, that they're on low carbs or zero carbs or low fats or you know, 800 calories a day. And when the fact that I tell people what they eat and the abundance and the levels of volume of food they eat, people are shocked because quite often they're eating a lot less. And, but this is sporadic, it's a sporadic amount of volume. They don't track their macronutrients, they don't track their calories. When you're talking about someone training into a competition, it's very specific and they're very isolated. And it's very kind of conditioned in the approach they take to it. And of course they have me there, structuring their macronutrients, structuring their training, their intake versus expenditure. So yeah, of course they're at an advantage. So let's move on. Carbohydrates and fats. Which one of these make you fat? Well, the principle of a diet and the principle of any diet, any, any way of losing body fat, any way of losing weight is that and you've heard this more than often enough off across many people and many literature you have to be in a calorie deficit you have to be eating less energy than you're expending um, so that for example is you know if you're taking in 1500 calories a day and your basal metabolic rate is around 1450 but you're adding another 500 calories of expenditure training do it resistance cardiovascular training just increasing your knee increasing your steps Theoretically, you're gonna lose weight and you're gonna lose body fat. Is it easy as this, as it is on paper? Sometimes not, because we're looking at things like hormonal effects, we're looking at things like insulin sensitivity. I'm not gonna run into these things today. Um, I just wanna kind of talk about low fat versus low carb and which one's best. And I guess looking at the, looking at the like maybe 20 to 30 years ago when the belief was that low fat diets were best, Generally, probably this was the reason because fats are calorific. You've got nine calories of fat per gram. So again, if you cut out fats, um, you're gonna have a larger calorie, calorie deficit than if you cut out carbohydrates or proteins that are only four grams, sorry, four calories per gram of, um, per gram. So that's my kind of theory based on that. Now, with the recent literature and people are kind of starting to get, get heads up with it, people believe that, and as they should do, you can't cut out fats because hormonally fats are good. You know, a, di a, a diet that's low in fat means a diet that's generally gonna cause hormonal indifferences like lower testosterone, um, lower estrogen testosterone balance, the kind of good hormones that help the body derive body fat and lose body fat and create growth hormone release and all these kind of good things that are needed for body fat loss and weight loss or any kind of diet as well as being in a calorie deficit. So carbohydrates, they are a basis level of fuel. They are no, number one kind of go-to fuel for the body. You limit carbohydrates, you limit the chance of intensity during training, so therefore you limit the chance of the effect of training, um, growth, recovery, all that kind of stuff. Yes, carbohydrates is probably the one macronutrient that I would lower. Um, if, for example, fats are around one gram per kilogram of body weight. Protein was around for an athlete around about 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. And I was looking to drop someone in a deficit and their calories and their carbohydrates were quite high at that time. Yes, that's probably the first one I'd look to drop to push them further into a calorie deficit. I try and keep their fats, I wouldn't say as high as possible for as long as possible. I always try and keep carbohydrates as high as possible for as long as possible, just because of the fact if they're not in tolerant to carbohydrates, if they deal with carbohydrates quite well, and you'll know if you deal with carbohydrates quite well, because if you don't, you'll be constantly bloated, you will react to certain type of carbohydrates that you'll take in, you'll, you'll, you'll understand, and once you start to diet, and once you start to um, drop your body fat levels, you, your body becomes more responsive. You understand the feeling of bloatedness. I mean, a lot of people spend half of their life sometimes not understanding what bloating is and they spend half of their life being constantly bloated and once they start to change their food groups around a little bit once they start to make better choices they understand what the feeling of not not being bloated is and they're shocked 
you know they thought holy shit i've been bloated for 20 years of my life so this is almost kind of one thing that you need to get around um when you're talking about fats i rarely try and take fats well i rarely take fats below one gram per kilogram of body weight with my clients just because of the fact that there's no need to fats are great fats are you know, again, you've got, you can't take that all from saturates. You've got different types of fats. You've got MCTs, mono, uh, monotrain tri triglycerides. You've got saturated fats, things like animal products, meats and stuff like this. You've got your omega-3s, which you mainly get from oily fish, sardines, the salmons, things like this. You've got your polyunsaturates, which are your plant-based um, unsaturated fatty acids. So these kind of things, they want to be in balance. Most people take on a lot of kind of omega-6 and omega-9s, probably too much, especially in the westernized population. And they're lacking in omega-3s. So first thing I do with a client is make sure their omega-3s are on level. So a good source of omega-3 product, something with a high DHA and EPA value. Again, I'm going into a little bit more literature than probably needed, but the basis of this kind of topic is to derive, you know, fats and carbohydrates which one makes you fat. The fact is guys, neither of these make you fat. Being in a calorie surplus for an extended period of time is gonna make you fat or put on body fat. If you're not utilizing those calories, you're gonna put on body fat, you're gonna put on weight. So that whole kind of classic bulking theme that people come out of a calorie deficit and they're like, right, fuck it, I can eat anything now. They'll most likely put on body fat as well as lean muscle. Is this the best way to go about it? Probably not. Hormonally, you're always gonna be better being fairly lean when you're say going through a bulking phase and when i say fairly lean i say you can still see a partial outline of your abdominals if you can't you've probably pushed it a little bit too far but the main factor of this guys i just want to get across if you're intolerant to carbohydrates which some people are you don't process carbohydrates very well you would probably want to head more into a higher higher fat lower carbohydrate diet and push yourself into a slight calorie deficit depending on a higher fat moderate protein and a lower carbohydrate diet. If you're not susceptible to carbohydrates at all and your body responds very well to carbohydrates, I would always favor a higher carbohydrate, moderate fat, and a moderate to high protein diet, even base level and moving into a, a progressive calorie deficit through there. Just because the, I'm always a massive fan and you know, whether it be competitive, whether it be a normal client, keeping carbohydrates for as high as possible, as long as possible as long as your protein and fat levels are around about kind of stable. Just for the fact, because carbohydrates are so important in terms of training intensity. If you drop your carbohydrates down, your calories down so much that your training intensity will suffer, you will lose the ability to even put on lean muscle. You'll lose the ability of recovery. You'll lose the ability of generation, regeneration, growth, re repair, recovery, sarcomere repair, all this kind of stuff, all this great stuff that comes from training. You'll basically just be in a constant calorie deficit and not be improving. So guys, that's my five minute knowledge bomb today. I know it was a little bit impromptu. I may have been confusing you a little bit, but guys, hell, we're on a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day here in Santa Monica, a little bit cloudy today. I'm a little bit out of breath because I've just done my um, uh, full body workout, kind of calisthenic workout. We've got a lot of equipment around here. But guys, I just want to say happy Tuesday. This is going to be released for you on a Wednesday. Um, wish my guys and girls luck. I wish everyone competing this Saturday in the WBFF LA Pro-Am luck. Um, it's going to be a great show. And we've also done a four series TV conditioning in LA series. It's going to be released in about three to four weeks. So guys, that's it. That's all I've got. It's a ciao for now from Santa Monica. I'll speak to you very soon on episode five. Follow me, Instagram TV conditioning, coach Tom Brazier on Twitter, Total Body Conditioning Limited on Facebook. Any questions you have, please feel free to shoot me off, send me a private message. But for now, I'll speak to you very soon. Have a great Tuesday and peace, love, and beautiful beaches.